concerns are growing about variants of the coronavirus. The first known case of the South African variant emerged yesterday in the United States. A new variant of COVID-19 known as the Brazil variant. Scientists say cases of the UK variant now appear to be doubling here in the US about every 10 days. The mutants are here and they're taking over. Scientists have recently identified seven new strains circulating in the US. And that's in addition to at least three others that were first identified in other countries. The more transmissible and possibly more deadly UK variant could become the dominant strain in the US by March. Viruses don't mutate unless they replicate. And if you can suppress that by a very good vaccine campaign, then you could actually avoid this deleterious effect that you might get from the mutations. But if there's a race between the mutants and the vaccine, we have a problem because we don't really know who's winning. It turns out the US is doing a lousy job at something called genomic surveillance, which involves sequencing the genetic code of the virus so we can pinpoint where the different strains are spreading. Right now, the US is looking for mutations in less than 1% of positive cases. That's far below the minimum 5% experts say we need to adequately identify and track new variants. Are we doing a bad job of tracking the mutations or are we doing a very bad job of tracking the mutations? Well, it's possible that we're doing even worse than that. Essentially, outside of a handful of countries, we have very little data on what's happening with most of, of these lineages, with most of, of the mutations. It's like we've already experienced a hurricane and now there's another one coming right on its heels and we're being asked to do this all over again. It's not like we didn't know this would happen. Simply put, all viruses mutate. About every other time someone catches COVID, the viral code changes a tiny bit. Over time, those little changes can create a much more dangerous strain. Viruses don't have brains but viruses are pretty smart. They'll adapt to avoid your immune system. The goal of the virus is to become as infectious as possible without its host knowing it's there. Jared Eau Claire leads Northeastern University's genomic sequencing lab. The hardest part about conducting genomic surveillance is actually the data analysis, right? Because you have to go through the millions and millions and millions of, we call them reads, like putting together a puzzle almost of, you know, what that virus sequence is and, and how that genome comes together. Uh, it's a daunting task. The variants from South Africa and from the UK and from Brazil, you know, we're watching closely, but the ones that scare me the most, it's the ones I don't know about. What should we do now to fix this? How do we ramp up national efforts? A real centralized approach with, with a network of labs who can support genomic surveillance and genomic sequencing uh, is the best approach, right? And, and maybe that's through somebody like the CDC uh, in collaboration with the Department of Health in different states, really having a group effort to uh, sequence aggressively at scale. But just moving samples around for that kind of testing at scale would be a challenge. However, there might be an unconventional solution to the problem. You could imagine a distributed wastewater surveillance system that's always on, we're gathering lots of data, we're synthesizing that to learn about what is where, what's spreading. So to be clear, one way to get out of the situation that we're in would be a dramatic escalation in monitoring what's going down the toilet. Exactly. I think it absolutely could be deployed at lower cost uh, and much less invasive than with other kinds of surveillance. And while that might sound a bit messy, it would actually clear things up a lot as knowing would help us all estimate how long we'll be stuck with this crisis. Because if there's a race between the mutants and the vaccine, we won't get back to normal until the vaccine wins. The slower the vaccine rollout is, the higher the probability is that we get variants that evade the vaccine. We're trying to adapt to the most prevalent form of the virus that's circulating the population. It's what, it's what we think about as the flu model, right? Right now you get a, a flu shot every year, we will likely need boosters of the vaccine yearly, every other year, some, some fashion. We can update the COVID vaccines quickly, potentially even in anticipation of new variants, and use that to our advantage. The vaccines are still effective enough that we can use them to get out in front of COVID-19 and control it.